Welcome, YouTube viewers, to a journey into the chilling depths of human devotion gone awry. In this captivating series, Fatal Devotion, unveiling the tragedy of five notorious cults, we delve into the haunting stories of enigmatic leaders and their followers, exploring the unraveling tapestry of lives lost to the grasp of cultic ideologies. From the inexplicable horrors of the Jonestown Massacre, to the mysticism and tragedy of the Heaven's Gate cult, we dissect the darkest corners of infamous cults that shook the foundations of society. Join us as we navigate the sinister twists of the Branch Davidian standoff in Waco, the eerie enigma of the Order of the Solar Temple, and the toxic legacy of Aum Shinrikyo's Tokyo subway attack. Through meticulously researched narratives, we aim to unravel the psychological underpinnings, charismatic leaders, and apocalyptic visions that fueled these fatal devotions. Subscribe now to embark on a thought-provoking exploration of these haunting tales, where blind faith collided with the harsh realities of the world. Fatal Devotion is not just a series. It's a cautionary odyssey through the tragic consequences of misplaced loyalty. In the remote jungles of Guyana, a harrowing tale of ideological fanaticism unfolded in 1978, culminating in one of the most infamous tragedies in modern history, the massacre at Jonestown. The saga was orchestrated by Jim Jones, the charismatic but deeply troubled leader of the People's Temple. Jim Jones, a charismatic preacher known for blending elements of Christianity with socialist and progressive ideals, founded the People's Temple in Indianapolis during the 1950s. Over the years, he transformed his church into a tightly knit community, attracting followers with promises of a utopian society built on principles of racial equality, communal living, and social justice. However, as the People's Temple gained prominence, so did the increasingly erratic behavior of its leader. Jones's messianic complex, combined with a growing paranoia, led him to move the community to Guyana in South America where he believed they could escape scrutiny and build a secluded paradise. Jonestown, as the settlement was named, became a place of isolation and control. Jones exerted absolute authority over his followers, employing psychological manipulation, physical punishment, and constant surveillance to maintain dominance. Those who questioned his authority were subject to public humiliation or more severe forms of punishment. The tragic climax occurred on November 18, 1978, Concerns about human rights abuses at Jonestown prompted a delegation, led by U.S. Congressman Leo Ryan, to investigate the commune. As the delegation prepared to leave, some temple members, under the orders of Jones, attacked them. The resulting chaos led to the deaths of Congressman Ryan and several others. Fearing reprisals from authorities, Jim Jones called for what he termed a revolutionary suicide. In a horrifying act of mass murder-suicide, over 900 men, women, and children ingested cyanide-laced fruit punch. The phrase, drinking the Kool-Aid, would later become a chilling idiom for blind obedience to a destructive ideology. The images of the rows of lifeless bodies sprouted across the Jonestone compound shock at the world. The Jonestone massacre remains a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked power, charismatic manipulation, and the devastating consequences of blind devotion to a leader's delusions. The haunting legacy of Jonestown serves as a cautionary tale, prompting society to remain vigilant against the potential for abuse within seemingly utopian movements and the insidious influence of charismatic leaders who exploit the vulnerabilities of those seeking purpose and belonging. In the twilight of the 20th century, a cult emerged that would shock the world with its bizarre beliefs and tragic end the Heaven's Gate cult. Led by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles, this group blended elements of Christianity, science fiction, and conspiracy theories to weave a narrative that ultimately led to a mass suicide event in 1997. The roots of Heaven's Gate trace back to the 1970s when Applewhite, a former music professor, and Nettles, a nurse, came together with a shared belief in extraterrestrial life and a conviction that they were messengers of higher beings. They believed that Earth was about to be wiped clean, and only those who transcended their human forms could survive. The cult's teachings evolved, incorporating ideas from science fiction, particularly concepts of human evolution, aliens, and a spaceship trailing the hale comet. 
Applewhite convinced his followers that an alien spacecraft, hidden behind the comet, was ready to transport them to a higher plane of existence. The tragic climax occurred in March 1997, when 39 members of Heaven's Gate, dressed in identical black outfits and Nike sneakers, participated in a coordinated mass suicide in a mansion in Rancho Santa Fe, California. They believed that shedding their earthly bodies was the only way to ascend to the awaiting spaceship and achieve transcendence. The meticulous planning and coordination of the suicides reflected the deep conviction and obedience within the group. The members ingested a lethal cocktail of phenobarbital and applesauce, washing it down with vodka. Each participant was found lying on their bed with a purple shroud over their face, in a chilling display of conformity and submission to Applewhite's apocalyptic vision. The discovery of the Heaven's Gate bodies sent shockwaves through society, raising questions about the power of charismatic leaders and the vulnerability of individuals searching for meaning and purpose. The cult's use of the internet to disseminate their beliefs and recruit new members also highlighted the potential dangers of unchecked information dissemination. The legacy of Heaven's Gate serves as a haunting reminder of the tragic consequences that can arise when individuals surrender their critical thinking to charismatic leaders peddling fringe beliefs. The mass suicide was not only a shocking event in itself, but also sparked discussions about the impact of cults in the age of rapid information exchange and the responsibilities of leaders who wield influence over vulnerable followers. In the spring of 1993, a heavily armed confrontation between a religious sect and federal authorities in Waco, Texas, would lead to one of the most infamous and tragic episodes in American history, the Siege of the Branch Davidians. Led by David Koresh, a charismatic yet deeply controversial figure, the sect's clash with law enforcement culminated in a fiery inferno that claimed the lives of many of its members. The roots of the Branch Davidians can be traced back to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, from which they splintered in the 1930s. The group believed in the imminent apocalypse, and in the 1980s, it came under the influence of David Koresh, then known as Vernon Wayne Howell. Koresh claimed to be the final prophet, interpreting the Bible's prophecies in a way that granted him messianic status. The sect established its compound, known as Mount Carmel, just outside Waco, as the group isolated itself from mainstream society, concerns about illegal weapons stockpiling and reports of child abuse attracted the attention of federal authorities. In February 1993, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms ATF initiated a raid on the compound, resulting in a violent gun battle that claimed the lives of four ATF agents and six Branch Davidians. Following the failed raid, a 51-day standoff ensued between the Branch Davidians and the FBI. Negotiations proved challenging, as both sides remained entrenched in their positions. The tension escalated on April 19, 1993, when the FBI launched a final assault on the compound. In the chaos that ensued, a fire broke out within the compound, leading to a devastating conflagration. The circumstances surrounding the fire remain a subject of controversy and debate. Some believe that the Branch Davidians intentionally set the fire, while others argue that the FBI's actions, including the use of tear gas, may have inadvertently ignited the blaze. In any case, the compound was engulfed in flames, resulting in the deaths of David Koresh and approximately 75 of his followers, including women and children. The Waco siege and the fiery conclusion shocked the nation and spurred debates about the appropriate use of force by law enforcement, religious freedom, and the influence of charismatic leaders on their followers. The events at Waco left an indelible mark on American history, shaping discussions on the limits of government intervention and the potential for violent outcomes when ideological beliefs clash with authority. The Branch Davidian tragedy stands as a cautionary tale, prompting a re-evaluation of tactics employed in dealing with unconventional and potentially volatile groups. The Order of the Solar Temple, a secretive cult founded in the 1980s, wove a complex tapestry of mysticism, spiritualism, and apocalyptic beliefs that ultimately led to a series of mass suicides. This enigmatic group, led by Luc Jure and Joseph de Mambro, blended elements of Christianity, New Age philosophy, and UFO conspiracy theories, 
creating a disturbing narrative that culminated in tragic events in the 1990s. Founded in Switzerland in 1984, the Order of the Solar Temple propagated a syncretic blend of religious ideas, drawing inspiration from various sources, including esoteric traditions, astrology, and notions of extraterrestrial existence. The cult believed in the existence of an impending apocalypse and sought salvation through ritualistic suicides that they believed would transport followers to a new life on a mythical planet. The cult's leaders, Jure and Dimambro, exercised tight control over their followers, fostering a sense of devotion and secrecy. Members were required to adhere to a strict code of conduct, and the cult's structure mirrored a hierarchical system with degrees of initiation. Rituals included ceremonies with a solar focus, designed to facilitate the spiritual transformation they believed would occur in the afterlife. The first public awareness of the Order of the Solar Temple came in 1994, when 53 members, including children, were found dead in Switzerland and Canada. Investigations revealed that these deaths were staged suicides, carefully orchestrated by the cult's leaders. Over the next few years, additional mass suicides occurred in France and Switzerland, with the total death toll reaching nearly 80 people. The cult's obsession with the concept of transcendence and an afterlife on another planet became evident through the complex rituals and symbolism associated with their suicides. Cult members were found dressed in ceremonial robes, arranged in specific geometric patterns, and often positioned with plastic bags over their heads to facilitate asphyxiation. The Order of the Solar Temple left a haunting legacy, prompting inquiries into the power dynamics within cults and the psychological mechanisms that lead individuals to follow charismatic leaders blindly. The tragedy also raised questions about the role of belief systems that combine elements of religion, mysticism, and doomsday scenarios, illustrating the potential dangers when such beliefs are exploited by those in positions of authority. The Order of the Solar Temple serves as a dark chapter in the history of cults, underscoring the need for vigilance in recognizing and addressing the potential dangers posed by charismatic leaders who exploit the vulnerabilities of individuals seeking meaning and transcendence. The tragic events surrounding this cult have left an indelible mark, emphasizing the importance of understanding the complex dynamics that can drive individuals to extreme and, ultimately, fatal actions. In the quiet morning hours of March 20, 1995, the bustling Tokyo subway system was shattered by a heinous act that would reveal the dark depths of a doomsday cult, Aum Shinrikyo. Led by Shoko Asahara, this cult carried out a deadly sarin gas attack that left a lasting scar on the psyche of Japan and the world. The origins of Aum Shinrikyo can be traced back to the 1980s when Shoko Asahara, a charismatic yoga instructor, founded the group as a spiritual movement blending elements of Hinduism and Buddhism with apocalyptic visions. Asahara prophesied an imminent apocalypse, offering followers the promise of salvation through his teachings and practices. The cult gained prominence in the early 1990s, amassing a significant following and garnering attention for its bizarre rituals, including the use of mind-altering substances and allegations of human rights abuses. Asahara proclaimed himself to be the Christ and promised to save his followers from the impending apocalypse. On the morning of March 20, 1995, Aum Shinrikyo carried out a coordinated sarin gas attack on the Tokyo subway system. Members released sarin gas in several subway cars during the rush hour, resulting in the deaths of 13 people and injuring over a thousand others. The attack shocked the world, marking the first time a terrorist group had successfully deployed a weapon of mass destruction in a major city. The aftermath of the attack saw a massive crackdown on Aum Shinrikyo by Japanese authorities. Shoko Asahara was apprehended, and subsequent investigations revealed a litany of crimes committed by the cult, including the murder of dissenting members, illegal weapons manufacturing, and attempts to produce chemical and biological weapons. As the cult's activities were exposed, the true extent of its apocalyptic beliefs and criminal enterprises became clear. Aum Shinrikyo's influence extended beyond Japan, with branches in various countries and a global recruitment effort. The Tokyo subway attack underscored the potential for violence inherent in cults that blend charismatic leadership with extreme ideologies. In the years that followed, Shoko Asahara and several Aum Shinrikyo members were convicted of multiple charges, and the cult was eventually dismantled. The sarin gas attack and the revelations about Aum Shinrikyo's activities 
forced a re-evaluation of the threat posed by apocalyptic cults, and heightened awareness about the potential for acts of terrorism perpetrated by unconventional groups. The legacy of Aum Shinrikyo serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of religious extremism, the influence of charismatic leaders, and the potential for violence when fringe ideologies collide with the wider world. The Tokyo subway attack remains etched in history as a horrifying example of the destructive capabilities of cults, driven by apocalyptic visions. As we conclude our journey through fatal devotion, unveiling the tragedy of five notorious cults, we stand witness to the haunting legacies left by enigmatic leaders and their devoted followers. The stories of Jonestown, Heaven's Gate, Branch Davidians, Order of the Solar Temple, and Aum Shinrikyo serve as cautionary tales, reminding us of the perilous consequences when blind faith intertwines with charismatic manipulation. We embarked on this exploration to understand the human psyche, the allure of apocalyptic visions, and the vulnerability that draws individuals into the clutches of such fatal devotion. These narratives, though harrowing, shed light on the importance of critical thinking and resilience against manipulation. As we part ways, let these stories linger in our collective consciousness, urging us to remain vigilant against the seductive pull of extremist ideologies. Subscribe for more thought-provoking content, and remember, knowledge is our strongest defense against the shadows cast by the tragedies of these notorious cults. Thank you for joining us on this sobering journey, and may we collectively strive for a world where fatal devotions are replaced by compassion, understanding, and informed perspectives.